or CC FM 107.5 forward slash 96.7. But Wesley, thank you so much for joining us this morning and good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. Do you want to come closer to the mic just slightly so we can hear you? Yeah. Try again. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, we're probably having a bit of a problem. Do you want to use that one over there? Just smooth it. Good morning and there thank you for having go. me. There we go. That's the man. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good to have you with us this morning. So, Wesley Moodley, let us know, where did it all begin for you? What has God been doing in your life ever since? Yeah, it's totally, totally awesome. Uh, my journey is, is one of uh, very interesting, if I may say. But God has been good, and you know, before before I start, you know, I just want to say, you know, to God, be all the glory for for the great things that He's done. Yeah, my journey is is is, is very 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 interesting. Like I said, um, hence my surname uh, Moodley. You know, I've got a I've got an, an Indian uh, background. Uh, I stayed most of my life um, in Durban, in a place called Chatsworth. So yeah, I'm from KwaZulu Natal, <laughs> but God has been good to me. Um, you know, growing up, in, you know, in that area, we've, uh, you know, I've served foreign gods. I've, I didn't know Jesus all my life. Um, so, so what was that like for you? You know, what was what was your experience with with God or all the or divinity? You know, what was your yeah. understanding of that growing up? The, the understanding is, you know, when you grow up in that situation, uh, in that environment, uh, there's a lot of gods that you serve, um, you know, a lot of gods with different purposes and uh, different needs, that cater for different needs. So that's why you have, you know, almost a thousand, if not more gods, different gods. So, um, you know, you've got a god of wisdom, a god of understanding, a god of love, a god of whatever the case may be, you've got a different god that... Uh, serves a different purpose um, but you know ultimately um, you know even in that circumstances in that situation uh, you I always had the understanding that there is a there is a bigger God sure. you know how did you know that well we we, we my situation was quite uh, peculiar because my mother married into into the family you know uh, my, my, my father was Indian and my mother was from Cape Town okay. And, uh, you know, my mother was very, very different, you know, from, from the rest, you know. Uh, we were, we had to relocate. My mother relocated when, in 1978. That was the year I was, you know, born. So my mother in the same year relocated and moved down to Durban. And then, yes, but I always knew that there was something different about her. You know, I watched her, wow. you know, and, and it's something we take for granted, you know, when people, we think that people don't look at us, people don't notice us, and people watch us and so forth. So I've been watching her and looking at her. Um, there's certain things that she'd done, you know, that she didn't have to do, and certain things that she did, you know, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I always watched her and looked at her, and, and I knew, okay, okay, she read a Bible when she didn't have to. It wasn't, she wasn't supposed to read a Bible. You know, she did certain things to please my father. You know, but she always, you know, went down on the knee and she was always praying and so on. So your mom was a Christian. Yes. And your dad was? He was a t Hindu. Hindu. Yes. Okay. Tamil. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we had that type of background, that type of upbringing. So, you know, uh, from there, you know, I, I think when my father passed away, yes, we relocated and we came back to Cape Town. And how old were you at that stage? I was around 12 when I lost my father, I think 13, uh, 13 onwards, uh, 13 or 14 years we came back to Cape Town. Um, yes, and then uh, I remember um, when, when I had to go to, to school, to, <laughs> to high school, so we relocated for that year, I think. Uh, and that year, uh, you know, it was very tough for me. Um, it's a different ball game, a different setting. I had to make new friends and so forth and so on. So, you know, from the frying pan to the fire, as they say. So I got involved in a lot of things. I got involved in gangsterism. I got involved with, uh, you know, drugs or whatever. But, you know, but I was always afraid of, you know, the needles and so forth. So I didn't go that far, okay. you know. But I did smoke the odd, uh, you know, whatever, yeah. you know. But, um, you know, through it all... Uh, I can truly say that, you know, the grace of God has been upon my life. 
there's certain things you 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 can you know you you may not be saved at that time but you do know that you know like i said do you don't know that there's somebody watching over you you do acknowledge that you do understand that and for me i've i've seen it throughout my life throughout my you know when i came to school in cape town like i said a lot of options were there for me but um yeah i didn't make the best decisions uh, for that year i think you know i failed every subject all my subjects i failed because I didn't actually go to school, but I went past the school. Mm-hmm. Literally, you know, I was in Ned Doman at, at Atlum, mm-hmm. and I literally went past the school because where the taxi dropped me off, you know, um, there was a nice entertainment area for us, you know, mm-hmm. so it was a nice uh, way to eat my lunch and spend my days with the guys there and yeah. so forth. Instead so, of going to school. Instead of going to school. I felt that would be better, you know. Uh, but my mother was under the assumption that I was in school, um, and then, yeah, and then I made sure that when the school is out, I come with the crowd back home sure. and live as a, you know, a, a normal a normal day went past. So, yeah, um, but that was, you know, when I when we relocated. So it was it was quite hectic. Sure. So talk to us about that, that transformation. Where did, how did it happen that you encountered Jesus for yourself and that you were transformed? Yeah, uh, my brother was, um, you know, when we when we relocated in, in Cape Town, I had to go back to Durban again, you know, because by that time I was wanted by a lot of gangs. Sure. Uh, so my mother gave me an option, said, you know what, um, you can you can stay here and die, or you can go back and, and, and live with the family again, uh, complete your schooling, you know, and then come back again, God willing. Uh, then I said, okay, you know what? If that's the case, I knew because at that time, you know, I, it was evident. You know, the guys were looking for me. I even had uh, friends in Durban telling me, you know what, uh, you 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 wanted. So you you it that news has also reached us as well. Yeah. So so that was a little bit of a scare. You know, I wasn't that scared, but yeah, but you know. <laughs> Even the biggest of us say, you know, I'm not that scared, but you know, yeah. deep down, you know, okay, let me let me see if I can make something happen. Yeah. yeah. So I went down to Durban, and um, I'd done what I was supposed to do. I even started new gangs there in Durban at school, uh, so you know, and so forth, because it was in me. You know, I was overpowered by those uh, demonic influences. Um, they led me, you know, to to initiate gangs in in and around uh, Durban. Um, at the school where I was so it was quite hectic you know always being the leader always you know taking charge and want to be the nice guy want to be the good guy want to be the clown and so forth and so forth so uh, when I came back to Cape Town you know things changed again Uh, I lost my brother I think at the age of 21 when I was 21 or 22 yes I lost my brother Um, and then I lost my grandfather yes and then I realized that, you know, life is very short, you know, in that split second, I got to think about life. I got to think about my brother who, who lost his, his life. He was killed in Kailita. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, you know, I wanted to take, you know, my, my gun, you know, just go around shooting some people mm-hmm. just so I can feel better about it, you know, uh, blood in, blood out, you know. Mm-hmm. I lost some of my, I lost my blood, so I'm going to take back some other blood. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I was at that point and, and, I, and I really had to make a decision, you know, what do I want in life? Mm-hmm. Is, this, is this it? Is there something better? And I don't know how to pray at that time. I don't know what to do at that time. Uh, so I just, I just said, you know, the, you, I, did, I did stop taking off myself. I did some introspection. I said, you know, there's something that, there's something, there's more to life than this. There's more to life than running around with guns it's more to life than hurting people it's more to life than you know being mr man being the macho being you know so we had a normal church service at my at my house you know because my, my grandfather passed away mm-hmm. and you know the, the the message went out you know and the invitation was made and i responded upon that invitation you know because normally, you know, for a young man who's got it all, you know, who's got the friends, who's got money, who's got everything, we don't, we don't normally go to church. We don't want to be to church. And especially churches that want to condemn, criticize, and judge 
we would avoid those type of things. Mm -hmm. But on this particular day, it was it, it affected me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was my family, so I had to uh, pay my respects and be at that service. And and yeah, that was it. From there, <laughs> I never looked back. Wow! So that was re literally that moment changed your entire life. Amen. 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 And then just kind of. We don't have much time, but I'm yeah. just interested to know journeying on from that moment. Yeah. You know, what was what, what was some of that, that journey? What did some of that journey look like in terms of you discovering God and really transforming, going from some someone being wanted like yeah. you were wanted yes, man by yeah. many gangs to actually being a Christ follower? Yeah, uh, my my journey henceforth has been very very interested, um, very interesting, should I say? Um, I've been, f you know, I journey from being wanted by gangs now to being wanted by, by many NGOs to be a part of mm -hmm. and to work with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very, very much now, you know, want to give back to community, want to give back to society because when, when, when I look at the youth and I look at, uh, you know, our community at, at large, we're looking at people that, that want to make a difference. And, and I really thought, you know what, I, I have something to add. I have something to give back. And that's why I'm always in, in, in Bishop Labors. I'm always wanting to give back and see how we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Not only in the young, but whoever, yeah. you know. So, you know, as a result, you know, we've, we've, I've involved myself now. Um, you know, I'm the secretary of the Bishop Labors Religious Leaders Forum. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also part of the CPF, you know, the Community Policing Forum, where I get to sit in, in, in various meetings as well. Uh, I have an executive seat at the uh, Bishop Labour's Development Forum, uh, and so on, so on. The list goes on, mm -hmm. but it's not just to occupy a seat. You know, you can occupy a seat and, and mean absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. or you can occupy a seat. You know, and bring that experience. You know, and and share with with them and see how can we make a difference uh, without you benefiting. You know, without without me benefiting, without. Uh, Wesley Moodley being the center point of it all, but through it all, you know, even though we sit at those tables with uh, some people who do not believe, how can we make a difference and cause them to believe? Sure. You know, give them an opportunity. You know, they might not believe in Christ, but they might see Jesus Christ through us. So that's my you know, that's my cause for for what I do and why I do it. You know, I can always represent Jesus Christ. I know where I'm coming from. You know, and I don't want anybody to go down that road. You know, so yeah. Man, Wesley, thank you so much for sharing. I'm so grateful that Jesus saved you. Amen. And that he, you know, opened your eyes to say, Wesley, I gave myself for you so that you don't Praise have to God. live this kind of life. And I'm just so reminded of people who may be struggling with family members, maybe people who are listening to this right now, Amen. and they're maybe wanted by gangs. Yeah. And maybe they're you know, stuck in a lifestyle that has caused them much detriment, or, you know, much destruction and has been to their detriment and to their sure. family's detriment. So Wesley, would you please pray for those people and pray for the family members who are trusting God for transformation in maybe their, their own lives or their family's lives? Amen. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity. My God, it's, it's a beautiful day, a beautiful opportunity for us to glorify your name and your name alone because there's no other name father god there's no other place we can run to father god but the bible encourages me this morning that the name of the lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe father i pray for families this day amen i pray god almighty for parents this day amen we've we've been blessed father god amen with the story that came out about ellen puckies and we look at all these influences and these demonic influences that want to bind us father god but I pray, God Almighty, for supernatural strength, amen, to come upon each and every one of us. Father God, we release the anointing of, of our Lord and our Savior that can break every chain. Father, there is hope out there, my God. And we as believers just have to continue believing, Father God, that you will never leave us, nor would you forsake us. My God, you've instated and you've put in place, Father God, beautiful people who can help and who can make a difference. And my plight is, my God, amen, that we as parents will not give up on our children. And we as children, Father God, even though we ventured off the road, even though we veered off the road, we know that there's still hope. There's always hope that we can come back. I pray, God Almighty, that you bless them. Each and every one that's listening now, each and every parent that may seem that's the end of the road, Father God, amen, it ain't over till you say it's over, my God. 
And I thank you, Father God, amen, for CCFM. I thank you, God, for the partners, hallelujah, that you would continue to bless them, that they will always be in a position, amen, to help these type of families that find themselves in, in places or in situations that seem impossible. I, I pray, God Almighty, hallelujah, that, you know, sometimes we as parents, we may seem there's no hope. But like my mother, that continued praying for me, she never gave up. And I pray, God Almighty, that we as parents never write our children off. There's always hope. We serve a God who can make the impossible possible if we only dare to believe. So I challenge uh, each and every parent to continue, continue praying for the children. Never give up because with Jesus, all things are possible. Amen. Awesome. Wesley Moodley, thank you so much for sharing this morning. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.